At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Welcome back. Jeff Frick here at Big Data SV 2014 in uh, Santa Clara, Heart of Silicon Valley. Uh, day three of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of this event. We're excited to be here. And as we said earlier, we're, uh, we've got a, a lot of startups uh, today, and we're also happy to, uh, to add to our women in tech on the cube list. So we're very excited to have Pascal Bicat Blanc from uh, Lightis, right? Welcome to the cube. Welcome and, and thank you for the invitation. So uh, I am very happy to be here and participate to this, you know, big event. Yes, good. Well, welcome. So let's. Well, first off, I guess we're going to change the name of the company. So we should probably get that set. So I want to go ahead and say what the new company is going to be and tell us a little bit about what the company does. Yes, yes, of course, yes. We are going to uh, rename the company Cloud Weaver. It's the name of the products we already, uh, you know, have on the on the market. Uh, it's a SaaS. Uh, solution for uh, cloud infrastructure users, and uh, what we do, uh, we help people better get better be performance in their cloud. So uh, it's a wonderful technology uh, named application defined networking, and it helps uh, to get more visibility in the network and the communication of an application in the cloud. So you say application-defined networking instead of software-defined networking. How do you delineate the two? Yeah, so it's complementary. Okay. Application-defined networking is a, a control layer above SDN. Okay. Uh, if you think SDN uh, helping the cloud providers and the n network uh, uh, operator to get a better, uh, uh, more, more flexibility in their network, uh, Application-defined networking is helping the user, the, the consumer of these uh, cloud resources to build their abstract network uh, in order to have a consistent system for running the application. Okay, and does it work uh, for a single cloud service, multiple cloud services? Which ones does it work with? It's Private, agnostic. Public? It's okay. agnostic uh, uh, because uh, you abstract the uh, uh, technical uh, specificities of each uh, devices or even the each uh, virtual uh, resource, uh, and you build something which is uh, an abstract computing network for uh, your application. Right. And you can expand uh, uh, from one single uh, cloud provider to multi-regions and also to multiple uh, cloud uh, providers, even on-premise. So it's it's really agnostic okay. to the technology underneath, and it gives a powerful uh, visibility and control over uh, your own assets. Okay. So when we were uh, looking up uh, your history a little bit on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. a little investigation, yeah. looks like you spent a long time in a public um, sector yeah. uh, technology uh, organization, INRA. So tell us a little bit about that and what they were about and why you left the secure, comfortable uh, <laughs> world of the public sector to jump into the crazy jungle of the private sector and start this new company. Yes, um, maybe I was bored <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> That's always know. a good reason to no, start a new company. No, it's not. It's not <laughs> this. In fact, it's it's for me. Uh, so I have done research for uh, more than twenty years in the public sector. I really enjoyed. I was also teaching as a professor and traveling all over the world and meeting and and meeting a lot of people. Uh, also launching a lot of uh, international initiatives with Japan, with CERN, uh, also with uh, uh, national labs in in, in US and um, the. At some point, we were helping researchers for doing a better research, and these researchers were um, in charge of inventing the, the future uh, large-scale distributed systems. And at some point, I said, oh, but the 
if you look at Google, if you look at Amazon, if you look at Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, these people have the real data, they have the real problem, and that's where you can do the real research. Right. So I say, okay, I will go to this uh, domain, and rather than just taking the data, I will help also to build this system. Okay. So for me, it's, 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 it's still research, in fact. It's reinventing uh, you know, computing and, and networking. Right. So, but the question of comfort, um, you know, sometimes you are just driven by, by your passion right. and, and you don't care. Right, good. Well, that's good. We like passionate people. And, and if you don't have the passion, you can't get it done no. because it's got to wake you up oh, every yes. morning. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about kind of the convergence. Cause we're, we're here at StrataConf across the yeah. street, Big O'Reilly's uh, Strata yeah. uh, show. And of course, this is Big Data SV. But talk about the convergence of kind of big data and cloud and kind of how the perfect storm and, and some of the advances in the technologies in both of those areas yeah. are now coming together yeah. are enabling some of the, uh, the opportunities that you talked about in terms of attacking some of these big problems. Yes. Uh, yeah, big data. Uh, you know, I started working on big data with CERN when we, we developed this uh, data grid. Uh, and it, for me, is because we are gathering a lot of data from sensors, for example, or from human interactions, uh, we have to process this data. So uh, an organism like, like CERN is looking at you know, high performance computing. So they were collecting resources to, to process this huge amount of, of data they were collected. So for me, it was uh, this um, tsunami of data coming. And today, um, we need this computing power. Uh, the cloud is a perfect place for computing all these data. Right. So big data is both, I would say, the machine to compute the data, and also, of course, the algorithms that right. enable to you know, accelerate the processing. And if you look at what people are really doing, they are in injecting a lot of parallelism concept uh, in, in there and to accelerate this, to make this um, you know, scale, scale, large scale uh, processing and computation uh, affordable and also uh, limited in time, so you, there are a lot in, you know, if you think about the theory underneath, right. uh, it's a lot of uh, science that have been uh, developed by a uh, researcher in, in the past, uh, and that's, you know, very useful when you have petabytes uh, to, to, to process. Right, a lot. Yeah, it's terrific. So I, I want to shift gears a little bit. Yeah. You obviously have a great accent. You're from, from France, right? Yes, I am. Uh, and we are here in the U.S. and we're in, in even more in Silicon Valley. And sometimes I think we get a little bit Silicon Valley centric and, and forget yes. about the world outside. Yes. Yes. So I wonder if you can give a little perspective of, of kind of the development of the market from a European perspective on, on cloud and big data. Um, and kind of where it's at, and, and what, what does it look like kind of looking back across the pond at the U.S. in terms of how things are migrating and yeah, adoption? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a really interesting question because yesterday, uh, maybe as you know, the French president uh, uh, was here with a um, large part of the government, uh, and for, for us it's bridging, uh, or you know, bridging uh, what's happening in the U.S. And, and in Europe, and, and we see a lot of you know, uh, evolution in, 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 in Europe, especially towards the cloud. Uh, I left Europe uh, two, three years back because they were not ready. Uh, I, I, and, and we really believe that the cloud was built in, 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 in Silicon Valley, and we wanted to be part of it. Um, today, I think the, the, the cloud is mature, and, and we can expect that uh, the European countries will really adopt uh, passively. Right. Uh, because um, you know, before internet, people were using, for example, in France, uh, a technology we call Minitel, uh, which you know, was an online uh, system. Of course, right. the interface was not that. Uh, you it was know, like texting, right? Wasn't text, it a text, yeah, kind text, of a texting yeah, text, over the yes, telephone yes. thing? Yes. Yeah, I remember. And that. and and they were they were adopted 
adopting this massively. Uh, and then the internet came and they adopt, after f some time, they adopt massively also. Right. And I f for me, the cloud will just be the next the next way for this. Well, the, the other thing that's interesting to me is the cloud crosses borders, right? And, yeah, of and, course. And, and you know, with, yeah, we with are, the myriad of regulations yeah. that you had in Europe, all different as you cross borders. Yes. You know, what do you do when everyone's just logging yes. into Amazon? Yes. And, yes. and the privacy yes. issues, and of course, privacy, we're always talking about Germany are, and... and yeah. Yeah. Does that does that start to break down? Is the cloud just another thing like the euro to start to break down some of those cross-border uh, yes. differences? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think privacy is an important point. Yeah. Uh, I I I I think it's a constraint on an attribute of data uh, that you want to add, uh, as you may have to add, you know, more security or more uh, performance or more reliability. So it's, it's this type of non-functional property that we have as provider of solutions to 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 pro uh, to give to the the customers. So for me, it's, it, protection is a good uh, it's a good constraint to, right. to or a good problem to solve. Right, right. It's not a barrier. It's it's normal. It's just normal that people want to protect their their data. Right, right. No, my question was more when if you've got different regs. I mean, I guess we don't really read the uh, we don't really read the user agreement anyway. I mean, however long yeah. that thing is, or different different levels of mm -hmm. security mm -hmm. based on different mm -hmm. yeah. geographies. But like yeah. say, so I don't I want to shift gears again. Yeah. And we talked a little bit before we got started yeah. about you know women in tech, and there just aren't yes. a lot of women in tech, yes. or certainly yes. there needs to be more. Yeah. John's got uh, daughters. I've got daughters. Dave, we have a lot of daughters have, represented I have a here. Too. You have daughters too. So it's, we're very passionate about <laughs> yes. it. Yes. So I wonder if you can talk a little bit about you know your role as really a leader in that both yes. from the public sector yes. now as a CEO and founder of your own company yeah. and a little bit about what you see with women in tech and are we moving forward what what are some of the things that that you see that are out helping girls do do better we call it stem there's a big movement here called stem which is more science and technology yes. education and math yes. for for uh, for girls or engineering excuse me thank you <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah I, I I really believe that you know Ladies like me have to, you know, help other to uh, become more uh, confident in in their in their power and their capability of doing things and understanding things and and also taking the responsibilities. Uh, even it's uh, you know not that obvious and uh, maybe sometimes you have other choices and you have to you know mitigate all these uh, different uh, paths. But uh, you know I I. I t in my company, I am hiring uh, both, and I, right. I I try to encourage also uh, young uh, uh, ladies to to you know adopt and embrace a, a, you know a scientific or engineering career because um, we need this uh, diversity in, yes. in in companies. We need this in economy, and uh, they have a lot of great ideas, and sometimes it's it helps also to uh, you know. Uh, change a little bit the the way we are we are framing or structuring things, mm -hmm. and I think it's 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 very good. Uh, so I enjoy a lot, and I push uh, this, the young ladies to to just be confident and and you know the it's a lot of time it's self um, a barrier. Uh, so we just need to remove this barrier. We are the boys are not better than, than us, and we can do uh, the same, maybe right. sometimes differently, but we, we, we have a lot of great, uh, we can bring a lot of value to any fields, I would say, right. in, in education, in research, in, in, in business, that's, you know, for everybody. Yeah, absolutely, and, 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 and you're, you're showing that with, with what you do every day. Mm -hmm. So we're about out of time. I wanted to kind of, kind of wrap up with kind of what's been your impression of the show. Is there anything that you've seen over the last couple of days that has been tremendously insightful, surprising? Um, what's kind of been your feel of the vibe of the show? Yeah, what I feel is there is a bubbling um, in a lot of algorithms, in a lot of different types of company, uh, taking data, different types of data, and uh, helping uh, crunching and, and making this data speak better. And I feel there is a lot of... Uh, um, you know, 
it's it's a good sign. Uh -huh. Something uh -huh. is really happening, right. and uh, uh, we are seeing that Internet of Things uh, will bring or feed uh, the, this field with more data. Uh, and there is a huge, uh, you know, a huge new world to explore. So I'm really excited. Good, good. <laughs> so thanks for coming on the cube on short notice. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, Pascal Viscat Blanc from the newly named Cloud Weaver. Um, so thanks again for coming on the Cube. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you.